Philip DeFranco is your friendly YouTube news anchor. Over the past 10 or so years, he's covered internet beef. He's not your typical news anchor. He just covers the shit that your little brother talks about. He's either talking about, you know, Rice Gum, Logan Paul, H3. He's not your typical news anchor. Yet ever since the introduction of TikTok as a mainstream media platform, Philip DeFranco has been doing some weird shit. When I first saw Philip DeFranco's TikTok, something was a little off for me. The first thing that came to my mind was outsourcing. There is no way Philip DeFranco is producing and writing all of this content. There has to be some sort of media company that is involved with this animation, with this writing, and then is simply sending it over to Philip DeFranco to narrate it and then post it on his TikTok under his name. This was especially concerning to me when I saw how Philip DeFranco's TikToks were mostly centered completely around global politics rather than the typical internet drama that he is usually facing. This immediately seemed to be American propaganda because every story that he seems to talk about is blatantly taking the side of the United States even when it comes to really complex issues such as global war. Why don't today we take a look at some of Philip DeFranco's most blatantly American propagandistic TikToks. These TikToks are so far on the side of the United States that you might think that he took no time at all to even consider what he is saying. Before we look at these TikToks, why not consider what the US propaganda machine wants you to think? Since just after World War II, the United States has been in a never-ending war with Russia. Not only Russia, but the socialist world that wants to distance themselves from the US-controlled capitalist world. These are countries like the USSR, Cuba, Venezuela, and China. You'll see a common theme in Philip DeFranco's videos, in which he is blatantly spreading information that is against Cuba, Venezuela, Russia, but most blatantly so is China. You will not find a single TikTok in which Philip DeFranco is talking politely regarding China. In Philip DeFranco's own words, he considers China the worst country in the world. So let's sit back, rest our heads, and check out some of Philip DeFranco's most blatant American propagandistic TikToks. First, let's check out how China dealed with the pandemic that first originated in China. They were the first to deal with it. Let's see how they took care of it. China is now strictly limiting citizens from going abroad. This after already limiting movement in the country. So if you live in China right now, not only can you not leave your country, you can't leave your town. And as if that wasn't draconian enough, in Shanghai, if you're in an outbreak zone, you can't even leave your house. And the only way to get food is through the government's deliveries. God forbid the Chinese government is giving food deliveries three times a day to all of its citizens. God forbid they provide their citizens with the basic necessities to survive a viral outbreak. When we look at the United States, they did a similar thing. They told everyone to stay home, don't go to work, stay safe, don't spread the virus. But the U.S. did not provide citizens with any resources. People still needed to go to work in order to pay for groceries, in order to pay for rent, because the U.S. was not giving anyone anything. All they said was, here's what you need to survive. We're not giving you any of it. Right, and this is all part of China's zero COVID policy, which the UN and WHO say is insustainable. Though China says it has been effective that only 5,000 people have died from COVID because of the policy, but also it's China, that's what they say, there's no way to verify that number. Oh yes, Philip DeFranco being blatantly racist towards Asians. People from Asia, especially from China because of Red Scare propaganda, as well as the DPRK, aka North Korea, are seen as brainwashed, they are seen as crazy, wild, doing extravagant things that are out of our comprehension. 
Has it ever crossed your mind that these are completely normal people? Not just people, but scientists with years and years of education, looking at viral diseases. Whoa, they could actually be giving accurate information. A country with a population of 2 billion people? You think they're just going to lie about their numbers? This is a scientific institution, similar to the CDC. Yet for whatever reason, when Philip DeFranco looks at China, he doesn't see regular people. He sees crazy people that are delusional. They're not spreading the truth, and the citizens that are not part of the truth are simply believing these insane numbers. I guess we can't just trust a single thing coming out of China because they're just crazy, man. But my question for you is, especially if you were someone that was supportive of the lockdown, would you have also supported a zero COVID policy in the United States if it truly saves the amount of lives that China claims that it does? Of course I would support a zero COVID policy. Nobody wants to get COVID. Nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to give COVID to their grandma and make her die. People just want to live safely and give the resources they deserve in order to live a safe life. God forbid China cares about their citizens. Let's check out another TikTok about China regarding Taiwan. This will be good. This TikTok is all about how Nancy Pelosi from the United States visited Taiwan which for the past 50 years has been considered a part of China by the U.S. government. China simulated an attack on Taiwan this weekend, with China appearing to focus on hitting high-value targets as its planes and warships cross the median line. And this comes as China warned that the U.S. should not act rashly and create a bigger crisis, with U.S., Japan, and Australia releasing a joint statement in response calling for an end to China's provocative exercises. China's provocative exercises. That's right. You know what's not considered an act of aggression by Philip DeFranco? the third ranking official in the United States visiting Taiwan, which has historically been having conflicts with China. Yes, this is not seen as an act of aggression by Philip DeFranco. This is simply seen as a visit to another foreign nation. We have no gains to make from this, according to Philip DeFranco. We're just simply visiting Taiwan because we're protecting them from China. Why not now we look at some of the more heinous videos from Philip DeFranco, where he blatantly demonizes an entire country. Kim sneezed on the beat and the beat got sicker. The Hermit Kingdom now has 1.7 million cases of COVID, but here's the kicker. They don't have the testing capacity to confirm the majority of infections. They're just basing them on people having fevers, meaning there are significantly more cases than what they've reported. That's right. Why don't we laugh at a country that has been seeing decades and decades of embargoes and sanctions from the United States? God forbid this country receive any aid from abroad. God forbid the United States help these people through the pandemic. To Philip DeFranco, this is just hilarious. North Koreans are dying from the pandemic. This is the most blatant form of Orientalism I've seen coming from Philip DeFranco and simply from the United States as a whole. When you talk about North Korea, the DPRK, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in the United States. People see that country as just insane. They look at every North Korean and they're just like, what the f man, you're just like totally brainwashed by this country, by Kim Jong Un. God forbid they have their own style of independence based on their suffering and oppression. God forbid they want sovereignty. Let's kill them, according to Philip DeFranco. They're crazy, man. They can't figure out COVID. They're just basing it off of fevers, these fucking idiots. So as you can see, when it comes to global politics, Philip DeFranco is just really on the wrong side. It's really unfortunate that you see this mainstream YouTube news anchor really just siding entirely with the U.S. military industrial complex. He's not putting a single thought into this analysis, and it makes me really consider whether or not he's actually writing any of this stuff. Because the style of the animation, the politics in which he discusses, is really just so far beyond what's typical for Philip DeFranco.
quite disgusting what Philip DeFranco is doing on his TikTok. Because at the end of the day, he should know better. He's a man that reads. He's involved in the news. He takes the time to understand what he's talking about. But when it comes to his TikToks, it really doesn't seem like he's taking the time to consider what he's talking about. It really seems like someone is writing this stuff for him, and he's simply narrating it. These are really topics that the U.S. government blatantly wants you to agree with. And it's quite scary that Philip DeFranco is single-handedly accelerating the capitalist ideology that is in support of endless war. Philip DeFranco's TikToks truly worry me. It really is scary that his TikTok page is so popular and every single f video is about global politics and it's always on the side of the United States. Without fail, he is always on the side of the United States. And without fail, his fans and many other people spending their time on TikTok will agree with him. It's really scary. I am Comrade Casey. Peace and love.